Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons, and what I want to do in this video is show you guys um, how you can manage land development projects uh, using Airtable, and I might do another video that shows you how to do the same thing with Trello. Um, so, kind of two two things I want to teach in the video, kind of two broad topics. One is just how you can use Airtable for project management. I've done a couple videos on Airtable, but it's it's a cool tool. I like it. It's basically replaced Microsoft Access at, at my shop. And um, I also want to just teach you guys a little bit about uh, how to how to manage uh, land development projects, specifically land subdivisions. And um, so even if you don't use Airtable, uh, you can watch this video and maybe pick up some tips on how to do that. So um, the reason I'm tackling this now is uh, <laughs> we're, we're getting busier and um, they're, they're building a lot of housing right now in uh, my part of California just because of the interest rates and, and some of the repercussions of COVID, I think, COVID-19. So uh, we got a lot of land development projects going on, more than a dozen. And so it just, it gets, it might be more than a dozen, it might be, might be close to 20. And uh, it's just, you know, it's just, I'm the only surveyor, licensed surveyor, and uh, I have a small team. So it's hard to keep track of all that stuff. So. It's getting to the point where I, I need to implement a system to do that. And so I've been thinking about how I might do that in Airtable or Trello when I want to just kind of trip through that with you guys, all right? So, okay. Like most of my videos, this is totally unscripted. So I don't know what's going to happen here, but I've got Airtable open. I've got a new base. Um, and uh, there's a there's a new table in here. And this is just, this is what you get when you just create a new base from scratch. And so I'm going to go ahead and rename this. And uh, I'm going to call this Land Development Projects. So uh, for now, it has the same name as the as the base. This these are called views in Airtable, so it's a it's a view of the underlying data, matrix data or, or, or table data. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to rename this from Grid View, and I'm going to call it the Main View. So my Main View is usually a Grid View. Okay, not, I, we may end up with more than one grid view depending on what we're doing here. Okay, and then I want to I want to create my fields, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the name field. That's fine. Um, then I'm going to add a, a single line text, and uh, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to call it client. Now you could put that in a separate table, but I'm, I want to keep this really simple, so I'm just going to make it a I'm just going to make it a text field. So I want client. Uh, then I'm going to add a, a single line text for phase. Actually, you know what? Let's make that a let's make that an integer. Okay. Then I'm going to have one. Oh, uh, uh, let's see here. I'm going to call it status. That's going to be one of the most important. Okay, and that is actually going to be a, a single select field. Okay, we want to add some options here. So I'm going to call, uh, the, the, we're going to start with concept, then we'll go to tentative map. Okay, and then I'm going to put a boundary resolution. Sometimes we do that before the tentative map, sometimes we do it after, but. Um, then we'll go final parcel map. Okay, and then. Uh, so I'm going to add add some. I'm going to call this tentative map. First check. Let's say uh, first submittal. Tentative map response to first check. Tentative map response to second check. Tentative response to third check. Okay, and then uh, we can drag these. So we've got our first submittal to the agency, and then there's usually some back and forth with some review comments. Usually it doesn't go over three. Okay, and then we're going to have, uh, so same thing on the final map. Final parcel map, first submittal, final parcel map, uh, I'm, uh, let's see, response. 
Let's check. Final map, uh, parcel map. Response to second check. Final parcel map. Response to third check. Okay, and then uh, we need tentative map in for first check. Tentative map in for second check. Tentative map in for third check. Final map in for first check. Final map in for second check. Final map in for third check. Okay. And then we'll sort these. So after the first middle is the first checks, response to first check. Then we get in for second check. We get in for third check. Well, I got this dorked up now, so we do submittal, then in for first check, and we do response to um, response to first check, then it's in for second check, then it's uh, response to second check, in for third check. Okay, and then uh, we're gonna say uh, approved map approved. Uh, let's say tentative map approved. Whoop. It's approved after the third check. Then we're going to have final map approved, and we're going to have final map filed. So tentative maps don't get filed, but final maps do. Okay. So this is a little bit complicated, but this is uh, going to be key here. So we want to track our maps all the way through this process, and I, I may have to come back and add some more, but. I think that's pretty good. Oh, it doesn't like status. I guess I had status already. Let's call it map status. And yeah, we can get rid of this. Okay, then I want to uh, just have a um, want to have a field called next critical item, just a text field, and I'm going to actually copy this and say. Duplicate field, and we're going to rename this and call it next step. Okay, with the same list, and then uh, we're going to put a comment field or notes field in here. Let's do survey or notes, and we'll make that a long text. Okay. Okay, you can also add attachments here if you want. I like I usually put the attachments in the notes at the end. All right, so uh, let's see what this might look like. So um, I'm going to put this on here. So I've got South Point. It's one of our our uh, subdivisions, and the client is Stonefield Homes. Okay, the phase. So this is West. Oh, that's a number. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a field. I'm going to call it uh, primary or master, master project name. Okay, you'll see why I'm doing that. Okay, so this is actually uh, South Point West, and master project name is South Point Los Banos. Because uh, some of these master projects have multiple subdivision maps going at one time. Okay, there's no phase on that one. The map status right now is um, uh, it's, it, we're getting ready to make the first submittal, so the next step will be uh, map in for first check. 
and then the next critical item is uh, we uh, need completed development application. So that's the next critical item for that one. Okay, and then I've got uh, three more out there. South Point. Uh, this is South Point uh, Phase 7. Spanos and it's South Point. Thanos, same client. And this is phase seven. Okay, map status is uh, we're getting ready to submit the final map on that one. So I gotta fix that. I should say final map. So fix that right now, sorry. Nope. So this should say final map, sorry guys. Okay, and the next step is gonna be, um, it's gonna be a final map in for first check. Okay, next critical item on that is uh, none. That one's ready to go. Okay, I'm just gonna do a couple more of these. Uh, South Point phase eight. Spanos, this is South Point. Spanos, Stonefield Homes is the client. This is phase eight. Again, it's final map, getting ready for the first submittal. Next step is gonna be final map in for first check and no critical items on that. Actually, that one needs drafting revisions. It needs drafting revisions. So we got a little bit of CAD work to do on that one. Okay, I'm gonna just do one more. South Point Phase Nine. Spanos. Okay, I can just copy these down instead of retyping them every time. It's phase Nine. These are gonna be the same. Okay, this one needs minor drafting revisions. Okay. And then, uh, okay, so. The other thing, before I wrap this video up, uh, we're gonna add one more field, and uh, I'm just gonna call this one map type, okay? And uh, I'm gonna make that not a single select, okay? And then we're gonna say, uh, so what do we have here? We have tentative, large lot, parse map, oh, let's see, tentative large lot, parse map, Tentative, large lot, final map. So it's parcel maps, five lots or less in California. Final, uh, I like calling them subdivision maps. Subdivision maps are five lots or more. And then we have tentative, small lot, parcel map, tentative. Large lot, parse map. Okay, and then we have final, large lot, parse map, final, large lot, subdivision map, and final, small lot. Well, I guess we should have, we could have a small large parse map. Final, small lot, subdivision map. Okay, so those are the map types. Drag this over, put it right here. Okay, so this is a large lot. This is a final large lot parcel map. Nope, subdivision map, sorry. And these all are uh, small lot, final small lot subdivision maps. Okay. All right, so once you have that data in there, uh, you can add views. So for example, let's make a new view. Okay, we're gonna make a new grid view. And we're going to call it um, tuning maps. Okay, and then you can just apply a filter. So we're going to filter. We're going to add a filter, and we're, we want to say um, map type, and we want just tentative maps. So 
So we're going to say or parcel map or small app map or large lap. Okay. So that should give us all. So something's wrong with my filter. Let's do and. Yeah, I'm messing up my filter. Let me see if I can figure that out real quick. All right, it is working. I just don't have any tentative maps in my main grid. So <laughs> let's do one more grid view. And uh, we're going to call this one final maps. Okay, and uh, we're going to set up a filter again. Okay, so we're going to say where map type. And we're going to say final maps or map type. Final or map type final or map type. Oh, let's see which one am I missing here? Final large lot, final large lot, final lot. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now that hasn't showed you guys anything yet, so let's let's do one more grid view that's actually going to filter something. Okay, so we're going to call this um, small lot maps. So I just want to see small lot maps. Okay, so I can come in, filter, and say, uh, let's see, map type is either small lot tentative map or a uh, Small lot parcel map or I need one more. Let's see. Tentative small lot. Nope. Tentative. Small lot, parse map, large lot. I'm missing one in here. So let's fix that. So we need to edit this. So we got tentative large lot, parse map, tentative large lot, subdivision map, tentative small lot, parcel map. Uh, yeah, this one's a duplicate. Sorry, guys. So this is tentative. Small lot subdivision map. Print. Okay, and then we got to go in back into our filter and <coughs> fix this. Okay, so this should give us just all the small lot maps, and you can see it does that. So it's filtering out the large lot map. Okay, so you can do all kinds of uh, grid views in here depending on what you want. Um, so for example, uh, let's just say I want to see um, in for first check. Okay. So in, in this one I want to only see maps that are in for the first check. So we're going to say status, uh, tentative map, in for first check. Okay. And it'll show me just the records for in for first check. Okay. So that's how, uh, that's how the views work. Um, and we're going to check out this Kanban view here in a minute. Too. I'll do that in a different video. This, I'm sorry, guys. I went long. This is about 20 minutes, but that'll give you guys a rough idea how this works. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna add a few more maps, and then uh, come back. We'll do a new video. We'll look at the form view and the Kanban view a little bit.